Mandarin. What's that? I'll count us in. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> I'm Phil Toluca. And I'm guest co host Adam. And we are Commanderin. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We put a spotlight on community issues, but never, ever talk about three banned topics, do we, Adam? Nope. Religion, politics, and Vile Smasher, the fears. Um, that one's going to be a little tough to avoid this time around, I think. Hey, we might break that one. Yeah, we might break that one. Uh, so we have a wonderful show lined up for you this episode. Uh, this time we're talking about our preview cards for Time Spiral Remastered, which is pretty darn cool. Um, and uh, our cards, you'll see they're, they're, they're pretty cool too. They're very happy that Wizards chose us to give us these free preview cards. We didn't have to pay for them. And we're not being paid for them. So, uh, yeah, and they, they give them to us. So let's uh, let's get into the show. And uh, But first, Nate couldn't make it uh, tonight. So we have a guest host tonight. None other than our old friend and uh, friend of the, an old friend of the show and a real-life gaming friend now. Isn't that right? Uh, Adam Hicks. Yep. Say hello, Adam. So hello, everyone. Good to be here. <laughs> Yeah, I've been waiting for an opportunity to get um, uh, get together with you on mic like this. Um, and this one this one came up. Uh, we're sorry Nate isn't here. And at the same time, it's pretty cool that you are. So we get to do that. And, yeah, I'm uh, simultaneously sad and excited. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I was hoping actually to have you on with Nate, like all three of us, and uh, just, you know, talk about a bunch of stuff because of you build some wonderful decks. We've been beaten by them fairly recently, uh, and uh, of course, most recently, you're you're famous for the uh, the the Jock of Jorns, which uh, I can only take up... partial credit for. <laughs> yes, you can only take partial credit, but you know what? I think you started the Jock of Jorns, the whole Jorn Fest or whatever was going on there. Um, so, before we get into our preview cards, why don't you tell folks uh, about how you started playing Magic? Oh man, um, I started playing Magic when I was in fourth grade in Amarillo, oh. Texas. My friend got me into it. We were playing fourth edition. And um, and then I also was playing, you know, a smattering of the expansions and whatnot. Crash of Rhinos is my favorite card. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really liked Gargantuans and Green and, you know, it was basically kitchen table magic. Um, stopped playing uh, when I moved back out to California in high school and long gap uh, of not playing. And then I came back in the Return to Ravnica block Oh, yeah. As my brother-in-law wanted to connect with me over magic and like very briefly he played and then he's kind of out of it. But then I stuck around again because he's like, oh, have you heard about this Magic the Gathering game? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I might have heard about it. And uh, and then, uh, you know, I, I also have friends that like were also playing. And so then we connected with that and I started going to pre-releases and all of that. And um, so, yeah, I've been playing ever since. Yeah, did we meet at a uh, strategic con, the the local Los Angeles uh, convention? Okay, so um, I started listening to Commander in because once I got into Commander, which was with the twenty fourteen the monocolor decks, mm -hmm. like I got really into Commander because I realized that's the format that was most like when I played in fourth grade, and uh, then uh, yeah, and so for me it was like this is the closest to kitchen table magic, but with a little more um, structure. Um, and then I wanted to learn more about it and I stumbled upon your podcast and, uh, I hadn't even heard of the command zone or any of those other ones. I started listening to your podcast and then from there found the other podcasts. Um, so then you were like my first exposure to like, oh, people are actually talking about this, um, and not just playing it. And, uh, yeah, I think it was strategic con where we finally met in person. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, from there you know <laughs> yeah then vegas and magic quest la and a couple of other places oh and then and then because you work eh, not really locally it's actually a big hike but uh, uh when in the before times when you would drive out to a city be midway between us then it was a lot easier for you to come out and you actually did come out for what did you come out for commander um, legends right i came out for yeah i came out for a couple of the events that you uh, hosted in the before times and then uh yeah we did the social distanced masked commander legends uh 
sealed. Yeah. Um, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, you you got you got to see what it's like when a player uh, gets so much salt in him, he takes himself out with a wheel of misfortune, right? That was honestly, honestly, Phil. That's actually one of the reasons I love Commander so much is moments and stories like that. Yeah, where people can get so salty, they just they just do <laughs> the wackiest things, and oh, yeah. I I've done the same in certain circumstances. Uh, <laughs> um. But yeah, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, it was actually, despite the, uh, the I was so annoyed uh, because of a series of misplays that I was just like, I'm done. I, it's irrevocably lost at this point. I wheel uh, misfortune for 40. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was 100. Oh, it was 100. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was ludicrous. Just like yeah. a mount that you put in there and everyone's just looking at you. <laughs> yep. And I knew exactly what I was doing. I was like, no one's going to put a hundred down a hundred. So, no. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so Adam, uh, thank you for being our friend all these years and for uh, now making it a real life connection. That's awesome. Um, and I can't wait till we have pre-releases at your place again. That was a, a ton of fun. <sighs> like 18 people doing all pre-release, meeting your family. That was good stuff. Yeah, um, my birthday uh, tournament uh, pre-release thing for Theros Beyond Death was the last one we did before uh, everything shut down. And uh, I was definitely feeling that uh, last month. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, that was rough. Um, well, uh, my second, this will be my second birthday uh, coming up uh, under quarantine. So uh, we'll get out soon, maybe in uh, eight or nine months. Uh, um <laughs> so <laughs> hello we are not at all depressed or uh, easily distracted on this show um a lot of people ask adam how they can help the show and you of course have made uh the decision to support us as a patron and we're really grateful about that um uh and uh it, you've also told a whole bunch of friends and that's what we ask people to do uh tell their friends share the show you can subscribe to our youtube channel which this will be on first actually not twitch um and uh, you can follow us on our Twitch channel, which is, you know, twitch.tv, Commander and MTG Podcast. Or you can support your dear content creators by going to uh, commanderandmtg.com slash donations, just like Adam already has. Thank you again, Adam. Um, and what, you know, while you're there, maybe click on the merchandise link and pick up a playmat or a T-shirt. And uh, it really helps the show to keep growing. And uh, we hope you make that uh, decision to join us. Um, and then, of course, we want to thank, uh, as we, we have, thank all of the Petroni once again, and uh, also Quiver Time. Quiver Time sponsors our giveaways with high quality deck blocks. Uh, recently, we've been giving away Citadels in our Twitch chat. Um, they uh, also make the Quiver and Bolt, and I'd reach around, but I would knock everything over and uh, show you my Quiver and Bolt, mm -hmm. but yeah, not going to knock things over. Um, and they're fantastic, and their sleeves are wonderful too. They have a matte and a, uh, a non-matte and clear and not and a black uh, black back as well. So give them a try. They're really good people, uh, and uh, we don't get anything for it except they're just giving our giveaways, and it's wonderful. Um, all right, so we're going to talk about our preview cards now, aren't we, Adam? We are, and I am super excited to be part of this. So, yeah. Welcome, uh, welcome. By the way, I didn't really give you a proper welcome, but I'm so happy you're here. We uh, we were looking for an excuse to have you on, and this one just came up, like I said earlier. All right, so this is for Time Spiral Remastered, and it's the first time a remastered set is being uh, released in paper. Uh, they've done what is it, Amonkhet remastered, and uh, yeah, some other. Yeah, and they've done that on Arena and also Magic the Gathering Online. Uh, but now this one's in paper. And it gets released on March 19th, 2021. It has 289 cards in the set. There's no collector booster. There's no super fancy showcase versions. But there are lots of alternate frames. And you're going to see one, uh, at least one of them tonight, uh, if you're watching. And hopefully you are. And uh, it has a mix of old and uh, new cards, but not new, like brand new for the set. New is in published since Time Spiral. 
Uh, and so we're going to see a bunch of new cards and old frames, old cards and new frames, and uh, quite the mix up, if you will. Um, yeah, so let's talk about our cards, right? Now let's you wanted you wanted to do the other one, right? Um, so I think I think I'll I think I'll do the one in the the new frame, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, okay. Um, so drum roll, if you will, we're going to put this up uh, uh, in the video, and the first of our two cards is Grenzo Dungeon Warden. Uh, uh, for X and Black Red, you get a two-two uh, uh, Goblin Rogue with X plus one plus one counters on it, and the special ability: put the bottom card of your library into your graveyard. Uh, if it's a creature card with power less than or equal to Grenzo's power, put it onto the battlefield. Now, I, I jumped right into his abilities, but the very first thing we should notice is Grenzo has the old school gold border uh, card frame. Yeah. that the original Legends appeared in. All of the Legends from the set Legends um, showed up in that in that frame. How cool is that? And, and I have to say, I feel like this right here is Chef's Kiss. Um, I wasn't really excited for Time Spiral until I saw this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what else are they going to be putting in the old frames? It really brought me back, again, like to my fourth grade days where... Oh wow, we got found some legend cards, you know, and look how cool they look. And uh, yeah, it really evokes that the kind of sense of uh, wonder, you know. Yeah, you remember seeing gold border cards for the first time, and you're like, "What are these?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. It's more than one um, color. What? No. <laughs> and uh, I spoke to uh, was right more than one color. How can you do that? Um, and now we just take it for granted. I spoke to wizards, and uh, they pointed out that. Uh, I was just double checking. I'm like, we're supposed to have the white text in this? And they're like, yep, we're just reproducing the original Legends border. Um, so it's a different font. It's that original Magic the Gathering font, which I forget the name of, but um and uh it, you know, it's it's typed in that uh in, in the bar. You can see it has a little descender, which kind of eats into the frame a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, it's using the uh, kind of the old school uh, mana symbols, I believe. Yeah, and, even the mana symbols, like, yeah, they have that kind of old school vibe to them. Yeah. And uh, this one uh, also has the purple time spiral, uh, kind of the cocked uh, hourglass. And uh, those are supposed to be the mix ups, right? The ones who are the one, the cards rather that are printed in the wrong frame for their release time. Um, because, right. yeah, and Grenzo was first printed in Conspiracy uh, on June 6, 2014. I remember it was a good, uh, good uh, set to play. Multiplayer draft, which was crazy. It was reprinted only in Masters 25 in 2019. And, uh, of course, in Vintage Masters and Magic Gathering Online. Uh, so, yeah, that old legendary frame. And for those of you who have never played Grenzo, we uh, did a quick little summary of how to play him. Um, so Grenzo is taking cards from your uh, creature cards from your graveyard, throws them underneath your uh, your library. Um, and uh, oh, wait, no, that's not what he does. He takes them off the bottom of your library right. and uh, puts them uh, into the yard. And if it's a creature with power less than his uh, power, then it goes out onto the graveyard. Sorry, I had that in reverse. Which, and what that means is stuff is going to be entering and leaving your graveyard all the time, whether a creature dies or gets milled and put in there or um, uh, it is put into the bottom of your, sorry, is uh, put into the um, uh, bottom of the library into the graveyard mm -hmm. and then onto the battlefield. It's all like routing through there. So you care about stuff leaving the graveyard. Mm -hmm. And um, I realized there's a brand new card called Tor Tormod the Desecrator. And mm -hmm. uh, Tormod says, and yeah, they, have you used this guy yet? Was he in your Brutal deck? I can't remember. Um, I have not gotten a chance to... No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't in the... You're talking about the one from the Commander Legend Seal. No, nah, he wasn't in that one. But uh, he does have some exciting possibilities, though. Yeah. Um, and he, he reads, he has partner. He's uh, four mana for 4-2 uh zombie wizard and he says whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard create a tap two two black zombie creature token so that turns grenzo if you can manipulate the bottom of your deck 
Um, for two mana, you get whatever that creature is that's on the bottom of your library and a tap two two zombie. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. And because Grenzo can do that at instant speed, you just wait until the end of your last opponent's turn and then flap a, uh, flop a whole bunch of creatures from the yard, uh, from the bottom of your library through the yard onto the battlefield. And each one of them brings a little two two zombie buddy. How cool is that? Um, and I think what I like here too, Phil, is something uh, that, that shouldn't be overlooked is that he has a variable mana cost too, because he's essentially an X spell in the command zone. Um, so you can get him out for two mana. And, you know, if you have small creatures, if you're kind of running with like certain themes that have smaller creatures that you're just trying to kind of get onto the battlefield, you can get him out really fast. Or he's a mana sink later on in the game when you're, yeah. uh, you have extra mana to just throw around. Yeah. And uh, yeah, most people know their uh, their creatures. They're they're in the ninety nine. The creatures power there, so they'll end up flopping, uh, like well, being able to flop nearly anything out. Um, and uh, remember that, unlike some other ones that have the scaling uh, effects based on their mana cost, you're actually not getting X based on his mana cost, like good old Verizal. Mm-hmm. Verizal is so lovely because it doesn't care how much the commander tax is; it counts it and it gives you a benefit for it. Um, which is kind of powerful if you think about that. It's like uh, same, with, same, with, same with uh, Prosh, right? Yeah, Prosh and Marath, and um, uh, I think that's it as commanders, but there might be another. Um, and so because stuff is leaving your graveyard, you want a card like Tormod that cares about that. You also want Sir Conrad the Grim, mm. a new a new card from uh, Eldraine, newish card from Eldraine. And uh, that says whenever a creature dies or is put into your graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, right? Mm -hmm. Sir Conrad deals one damage to each opponent. So when a creature, uh, when you take a creature out of your graveyard and put it on the bottom of your library, it's left the graveyard. When you take a creature off the bottom of your library, put it into the graveyard. If it's less than Grenzo's power, you throw it back onto the battlefield. It has also left the graveyard. All sorts of fun shenanigans like that. I wonder if people have really kind of, because I know people have done a couple of different things with this. They try to get his power up higher so they can cheat out big mana costed things. I know that some people that are really degenerate will use infect with this, but I really, I'm really intrigued by this idea of almost going that opposite direction and not putting a ton of counters on Grenzo, but then pumping a bunch of mana into his ability to see how many creatures you can get out from the bottom of your library. So it's Sir Conrad, Perfrost, some of those other things, and you could, or I think Impact Tremors, some of those other ones you can just start like really kind of pinging people with them entering the battlefield. You don't even have to attack with them. Yeah. Um, yeah, just entering and leaving the, the, uh, the graveyard like that. And because Sir Conrad is like his ability, is that what you were talking about, pumping it into his ability so that you could just get a whole bunch of creatures into your own graveyard? Well, when I meant, yeah, so what I meant was, that, yeah, pumping man into Grenzo's abilities. Yeah, so you, you start, you just, you know, and you have a bunch of low power creatures in the deck. Yeah. And then you just, yeah, you start just churning them into the graveyard, out of the graveyard, um, you know. And you can do it at instant speed, so you can do it, like, at the end of people's turns so they don't have to have summoning sickness. Um, there's a lot of, like, real fun... Uh, possibilities with this yeah plus it uh it throws it into the graveyard and then it checks to see power so if it can't do it the worst that happens is you now have a big uh power creature in your graveyard and as we all know black uh has some ways to deal with that Mm. um to make that a strength so um yeah and there are a couple of other cards that care about things leaving the graveyard um including cards that when they leave the graveyard themselves they do things um, but look for those when you're building this deck. And then uh, if you got to put creatures on the bottom of your library, there are a couple of, uh, uh, I say a couple, there are several ways to do it. Um, six of them are artifacts and uh, artifact creatures in some cases. And one of them is a black artifact like the Cauldron of Eternity, which uh, costs less for each creature card in your graveyard, which hopefully you're going to be stocking. Uh, and then whenever a creature you control dies, Put it on the bottom of its owner's library. So now, if you got Grenzo out and you're sacrificing your creatures, which red and black are known to do, then you suddenly know with absolute certainty what's on the bottom of your graveyard. Uh, now, no, the Cauldron, Phil, the Cauldron's a replacement effect, right? Yes. That, 
so unfortunately oh. it won't hit the graveyard and get any of those triggers before it goes no. to the bottom of the library? No, I'm sorry. It's not a replacement effect. It, it's a triggered ability. So right, a creature so has to die. The graveyard. Yes. It mm. sees the graveyard. And then <laughs> Sir Conrad says yum. And mm-hmm. um and uh the other one, what's it, Tormod, uh says yum, right? Uh, if it if it then leaves the graveyard, especially. Oh yeah, because it does, right? Because of the cauldron. Right, it leaves the graveyard to go to the bottom of the library. Yeah. So you have cauldron out, you kill a creature, one of your own creatures, and you get a two-two zombie. All right, this and, is sounding really spicy. I'm really liking some of the things we can yeah. do with this. Yeah, there, it it really is good. Um, I've I played against a Grenzo deck, and basically you get Grenzo to power six, and there's nothing he can't pull. Uh, and then these six cards all help uh, put things on the bottom of your library for different costs. Uh, some of them don't require tapping. Some of them do, and it's okay. Um, you're just vulnerable to graveyard removal at that point. So anybody has a Leyline of the Void or, um, or any of the other horrible things, you're going to have to deal with it. And as we all know, red and black, not so good at dealing with things like that. Well, that's why I put scavenger grounds and stuff in most of my decks. Yeah. Because graveyard hate is sort of a necessary thing nowadays. Yeah, it really is. And uh, the me- meteor golem as well. Meteor golem only has a power of three. Um, oh. And then if you got, if you have to put a, if you're holding a bunch of creatures, so you got a bunch of creatures in your hand, right? Right, Adam. And, yep, and yep. you don't, you don't want to cast them because that costs mana, and Grenzo will do it for two mana. So a brand new card from uh zendikar zendikar rising is uh valakut awakening and basically it lets you put any number of cards from your hand into your graveyard on the sorry oh, the bottom, on the of, your bottom of your library right and then draw that many cards so you got a handful of uh uh creatures just put them on the bottom of your library and gets uh you know five or six new cards or... and it's plus one isn't it it's the number of cards plus one. Oh yeah plus one that's right Oh, that's so, delicious. That that is really good. Yeah, it it works really well. It works really well. Now, now you're right. I want to build a Grenzo deck. I I I, I didn't build one before, um, but now really do. So some of the creatures you're going to want to use with Grenzo, um, Meteor Golem, of mm. course, destroy target permanent. That's great when there's a Leyline of the Void out. Um, Dockside Extortionist, which is just a glorious card. And is uh, forty dollars now. By the way, Adam. Oh, forty dollars! Uh, I think it's gone down. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. And uh, duplicant, which is a card that when a creature when it enters the battlefield, it imprints a creature onto it, and then it has that creature's power in tokens. Um, has to be a non-token, of course. Woo! All right, that's a quick guide to Grenzo, and maybe we'll have a Grenzo deck. But you're about to introduce our second card. Yes, um, with a little bit of fanfare, a little bit of drum roll. Yeah, um, we have Kervik the Merciless. Yeah, um, in the a new legendary frame, um, yeah. it looks real sweet. Um, it? For five generic and a Rakdos or a black and a red, you get a legendary creature, Human Shaman. And whenever an opponent casts a spell, Kervik the Merciless deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost not mana value yet, uh, to any target. Um, and you get a 5-4 body to go along with that. So it's not too shabby on that front. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really good. You know, he was uh, printed in the original Time Spiral. Uh, that's right. Yeah, which released on uh, September 23rd, 2006. Um, it was only reprinted once. This is actually, at the time of recording this, it's $11. Uh, this, the original is sixteen dollars, so it's a pretty valuable card. I didn't realize that, um, but I guess it goes in pretty much any Rakdos deck because it's so brutal. Um, yeah, and I would definitely say that for the most part, I would have it as a ninety-nine card. Yeah, uh, mostly because of its uh, CMC, its converted mana cost, but um, but its effect is pretty rowdy. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I've seen it in a, a deck that's heavy on recursion, of course. Uh, so that if somebody if it if it gets killed and put in the yard, you just keep it in the yard, and then uh, reincarnate it or whatever to reanimate it. That's mm. it. Yeah. So uh, you want to tell us about these cards? 
Um, well, uh, with Kervik uh, specifically, um, what I really like about Kervik and uh, that kind of style is um, it doesn't prevent you from playing Magic, because I know that in Commander, a lot of the feel-bad cards are like ones that don't let you play Magic. So, for example, Gaddic Teague is a huge example of that. Grand uh, Arbiter Augustine is a, an example of that. Yeah. Um, Iona, Shield of Ameria, uh, May She Rest in Peace uh is a uh, example of is a shield of america yeah um yeah uh is a good example of that and um people don't like it when they can't play magic um but karavik says sure you can play magic it's just gonna hurt i'm just gonna it's gonna cost you something to do what you want to do yeah um and especially like what's funny is that it really punishes commander players because a lot of us really like the big flashy um, spells um so for example expropriate uh tooth and nail uh you know uh some of those extra uh, turn spells that cost a lot um and i think if i'm not mistaken spells like blasphemous act that even though you get that discount if there's a bunch of creatures on the battlefield it still costs nine uh, uh converted mana cost so if you cast that even if you cast it for cheap it will still hurt you real bad to cast it um this is why i like the torpor deck so much that's one of my favorite decks now is where it's like if you do anything you take damage if you tap your creatures if you tap your lands if you sneeze if you look at me crossly you, you're gonna take damage um and so caravic like really fits into that kind of uh you know strategy yeah yeah it really does um, it's just a, if you, if you haven't seen a properly built Caravec deck or deck that uses Caravec, um, it's just, it's just brutal. Um, and, uh, especially when Caravec can be cast at that point, people are getting ready for their haymakers. They're getting ready to cast the seven, uh, you know, the big seven, what do they call now? Man of value cards. The, the um, hoof. Yeah. Hoof. Oh, um, maybe you'll win though with hoof. So, uh, the, the way I have seen Kerbeck is in a, a difficult choices tribal deck, right? Mm -hmm. Like where the tribe is uh, cards that make it a difficult choice to play magic. And so uh, what about these three on the three difficult choices cards? Um, I don't see them myself, but what uh, cards are they? Oh, uh, uh, Zosu, the uh, Zosu, the Punisher. Mm. Uh, who is a uh, tutu goblin? That's right. I forgot you can't see the show notes right now. Um, uh, deals two damage to that land's. Whenever a land comes into play, it uh, Zozu the Punisher deals two damage to that land's controller. Uh, so it's like an Ankh of Mishra, which is also a, a common card in uh, Kervek. Mm -hmm. um, uh, painful quandary for three in black, black. I love that uh, card. Yeah. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player loses five life. Unless they discard a card. Not telling you to lose five life. Not telling you to discard a card. But you got to choose one of those. Well, and as you know, Phil, um, I really love uh, cards. And I really love strategies where it's like, I'm not doing it to you. <laughs> like, yes. you're making the choice. Or, look, I didn't attack you. That other person did. Now, granted, I goaded all their creatures. But they didn't have to attack you. They yeah. chose to. They like, could have attacked any other player. Right. And, and I think that's why I like Bile Smasher so much, just to bring up the, the hated uh, non-topic yep. non, uh, here, right? The banned topic, right. Uh, but he's so I love that because he's so chaotic. And you can, you can honestly be like, look, I picked this at random. The die shows who got burned. You got burned. Don't be salty about it. Um, you know, don't get mad at me. Blame the dice. Yeah. Uh <laughs> yeah. The dice did it. Um, um little trivia oh well I, we're not supposed to talk about vile smashes so i won't um <laughs> and then the third one of course is uh on this on this page is mana barbs uh for three and a red you get a red enchantment that says whenever a player taps the land for mana mana barbs deals one damage to that player and in torbrin it does a lightning bolt to them yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, and Torbrin definitely goes into a Caravec deck like this. Absolutely. Uh, and we'll talk about another card that does it. Um, oh, and hey, look. Uh, so these these three cards are going to wreck you, as I as I put it. 
uh, vile smasher the fears. We're talking about this topic all over the place. Little trivia. Did you know that vile smasher is the alternate timeline in, uh, what is it, Dragons of Tarkir uh, for uh, ankle, uh, ankle slasher? Ankle. Yes, yes, yes. Not ankle biter. I always think, I always, I always yeah. in my mind ankle biter. But yes, it's the, uh, the little goblin from the original uh, Ank- cons timeline. Yeah, ankle shanker. That's it, the ankle shanker. Yeah. That's it. Um, and uh, both Vile Smasher and Ankle Shanker are female goblins. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so Vile Smasher, the fierce, of course, is whenever you cast your first spell each turn. It deals random damage to that. Uh, it deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost to an opponent chosen at random. So, you know, Vile Smasher is just randomly punishing people, and it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so cute. So gets away with it. And then if you cast a removal spell to get rid of Vile Smasher, Caravex is going to cause damage. It's just damage all the way down at that point. Um, and uh, then Toralt, God of Fury. This works really well with Caravex uh, mm. ability. Because uh, Caravex targets any target, and whenever a control creature or planeswalker an opponent controls is dealt excess damage, uh, deal that excess damage to any target other than that permanent. So another target. So and yeah, you- I, li- I like this a lot, Phil, because what it does is because with Caravex, sometimes it feels a little limited. You have to choose one or the other, and Toral's like, why do you have to choose? Kill their creature, also hit them. It works out great for everyone. Well, yeah. not them. It looks works great for you. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> pretty bad for them. Uh, yeah, so Toralf is doing that. Torbran is a great, great buddy of Toralf. And uh, uh, the Jaya, the uncommon Jaya, right? The one that says amplify red damage uh, sources. And then you combine all of that with Fiery Emancipation, which is the M21 uh, six mana red enchantment. If a source you control, any source, would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals triple that damage to that permanent or player instead. Toralf is uh, key to making that really fun. Yeah, and I, and I love, I just love how extra it is. That and Nyx Bloom Ancient, where they're just like, forget doubling, you're going to triple the damage triple. or triple the mana. Like, <laughs> I remember when they first got uh, spoiled and everyone's like, what? You know, uh, yeah, and uh, Dictate of the Twin Gods is also a doubler. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, not in these colors, but um, if you can uh, do uh, Mardu colors, you can actually get uh, Gisela in there, mm. and it just gets brutal. And in uh, fact, uh, Furnace of Wrath. Oh, yeah, Furnace of Wrath. And if you look up at EDH Rec, you can see some uh, recommendations for both of these commanders. And Furnace of Wrath is in Caravac, of course, and plus a whole lot of other mean ones, just really mean ones. Um, and something else I like about this uh, strategy, Phil, is, um, and I think that Josh Lee Kwai has talked about this before, but the idea that it puts a timer on games. Yeah. You know, where it's because sometimes games of Commander, as much as we love them, sometimes they can drag on, especially with players putting out certain things like Knowledge Pool and other dastardly things like that, Teferi's Puzzle Box. Um, but here, what it does is that Karavik, uh, and that what Karavik brings to the table says, all right, well, we're going to put a, 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 count, a timer on this game because eventually somebody, we're all going to be taking enough damage that we're all going to be low and easy pickings for any sort of other strategy. Yep. Um, and so I like that it, what it can do is it can speed things up a little bit and provide more games in any given evening of Magic. Yeah, it really does speed it up. Sulfuric, sulfuric Vortex is another one of those where players take two points. Mm-hmm. With Fiery Emancipation, that means six points on their upkeep. Uh, it just gets hideous really fast. Quake, and, Quake Bringer, the new one from Kaldheim, yeah. where it does, it does a similar thing, except I think it's one sided. It does it to them and not to you. Yeah. Um, so. And the the new dragon from Zendikar that uh, cares when another creature enters the battlefield and then it slams something. It's oh, uh, Terror of the Peaks from Core that's 21. It. Oh, yeah, uh, Core yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good stuff. All right. Well, Adam, we have uh, covered it. Do you have any last words? Uh, not for you, but like for our listeners, you know, you're going to be back. <laughs> um, hopefully. Um, two things. 
Oh. One, um, Time Spiral Remastered, if this is an indication of where they are going with things, I am actually super excited about this. Like I said, I was going to sit it out and wait for Strixhaven, but they've what they've managed to do is, like you said, not only do a remastered in paper, which you often do not see, but it's more than that. Like, you know, what they're doing is they're bringing in all this like really fun things that they didn't have to. Um, but are really making it exciting, like the old frames for newer commanders and new frames for older commanders. Um, and again, like much many sets that we're seeing right now, they seem to be a love song to commander. And I am totally about that. Um, yeah. So that's the so first that and second, um, what I'm hoping is that these cards at least uh, encourage you guys out there that if to try different strategies. Right, because sometimes, especially when you're new to Commander or Good you're kind of getting into it, you or even if you've been playing for a while, you find yourself doing like the same types of decks. And Commanders like this are sort of wacky and kind of off the beaten path. But what they do is they force you to do deck building off in different directions. Um, that you, I, I like how Nate does it, where she's like, "Well, I'm not really comfortable with the strategy, but I want to try it out and see um, if it's actually something that I, would work with me." And so I'm hoping that you guys got inspired by, I got inspired by Grenzo personally. I kind of passed him up for the Havoc Razor because I like doing Mill and Mono Red. Um, but like now that I'm seeing Dungeon Warden like this, I'm like, ooh, I think I might actually want to build this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, yeah. And it it's the the frame too, right? That really, yeah. that really kind of uh, awakens the fires, if you will. For yeah, it hits that nostalgia remember. button like real hard. Yeah. Like, um, and uh, we can direct people actually to our old episode, episode 97, uh, where we had a uh, uh, guest host, Sean Main, who is uh, the creator of the conspiracy format. He came on the show to talk about Rakdos Guild. And uh, he talked about specifically um, uh, uh, a Grenzo deck he built and uh, that Mel uh, used to drive. Uh, Mel, I think, was his girlfriend at the time. Um, but uh, yeah, so he built a Grenzo deck and it has all of these tricks and more. So go back and take a, a look at that. I don't think we've done a care vet de deck yeah, yet. Yeah, he's a little more tricky because of that real high CMC. Like I yeah. said, he's usually in the 99 and not the lead singer. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, you folks rock. Wish we could have done this live, but we're, we don't have the tech yet to be able to release cards to you live. So this will be on uh, YouTube. Um, and uh, Adam, you'll actually see notice of that um, uh, because I'll post it, of course, to the Patreon and that sends out an email to everybody. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, so uh, uh, viewers and listeners, if you like what you just heard, please consider joining Adam and donate a dollar per show or a buck a month, whatever you can afford. And these are really tough times. So if you are one of those who can do it, that's awesome. Thank you. And if you aren't able to do it right now, please don't and just tell your buddies about this. Um, and again, uh, if you can, it's commanderin.com slash donations. And special thanks go to all of those people who already show their support. We're really grateful uh, for you. And Adam, uh, we're really grateful for you too. Uh, and we couldn't do it without you guys. So thanks. Oh, and just uh, thank you so much for having me on tonight. Uh, this has been a lot of fun and uh, really got it. It's really exciting to look at these new cards and uh, everything. So uh, thank you yeah. so much. Oh, you're welcome. It was our pleasure. Uh, my pleasure in this case. And I know Nate's going to look at this video in the next couple of days and we'll love it too. Um, so how can people reach you out? Um, well, the, the easiest way is on Twitter. I'm at Elspeth lives on Twitter. Yeah. And uh, so you can hit me up there. Um, hmm. And uh, that's probably the best way to reach me. And uh, as of this recording, you were the last person to win uh, a Citadel deck block. That is correct. And I'm yeah. really excited about that. <laughs> uh, funny story. I only realized it was you at the end of the show. Nate and I were breaking down the uh, the microphones and whatnot. And, uh, and she was like, oh, it was really cool that Adam won. And I was like, Adam who? <laughs> and she told me. And I was like, wait, Adam won that? But this... He didn't win that. Somebody else won it. And I said the name. And she says, that's him. And that's his Twitch handle. And I'm like, oh, what an idiot. I really like Elspeth. I really like a Johnny. So my Twitch thing is a Johnny the Wanderer. And then my uh, Twitter handle is Elspeth Lives. Yeah. Which, by the way, I created before Theros Beyond Death. So 
Yeah, I remember you saying you were very uh, sad she died, and uh, you were you, you refused to admit she that she died. That's right, and I was right. <laughs> yes, you were. Um, and then on uh, Twitter, uh, uh, the show is at Commander and MTG. Uh, I'm at K E T J A K Ket Jack on Twitter, and Nate is at Mama Barbarian M O M M A Barbarian. Um, we want to give special thanks to uh, Nate Burgess, the former co-host of this show, uh, for the theme song. Mike Condon from Commander Social wrote the guitar riff version, which you're about to hear. Uh, and then, of course, we always want to thank Tyler Webb, uh, who is an old patron who uh, gave us uh, space on his servers to uh, back up the show in case uh, we our, our main so our, our main servers went away. And uh, he runs the explicit, uh, unformatted review show. It's very funny uh, reviews of old movies. So now, Adam, I'm kind of springing this on you. And I know you can't uh, really see the uh, show plan, but you get to take us out. All right. <laughs> um, Putting you on the spot here, too. I know. I'm really on the spot now. Well, thank you all for joining us tonight as we went Commanderin. <laughs> Now, what that lets me do is sync that because then you have a nice conversational. Uh, I know how much lag there is. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. I, was, I wonder yeah. why you guys did that at the beginning of the Commander and Podcast thing. Okay. Yep. This is the Commander and Podcast thing, by the way. Well, right. Uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm kind of still putting that together. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. I'm actually on there with you doing that. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. <laughs>